Where you live could be full of fake buildings. Shocking, isn't it? I've walked the streets of my hometown countless times and never spotted them before. But not everything around us is how it seems. There's a secret underbelly hidden behind or beneath those familiar exteriors. Ready to take a look? You might never see the world in the same way again. Okay, let's find out why your city might be full of fake buildings. let off some steam. You'd think a city as crowded as the Big Apple wouldn't have a lot of room for fake buildings, but that would be your first mistake. Jorlamon Street looks like any other street in Brooklyn, except it's hiding one very dark secret. At first glance, house number 58 doesn't stand out in any obvious way. Okay, it's a little redder than its neighbors, but the longer you look, the more things seem a little weird. The windows are fully blacked out so you can't see in. This big metal hatch blocks the basement and the door, well, let's just say you'd struggle opening this thing by yourself. But when the sun goes down, things get really weird. Passersby have claimed that in the dead of night, you can hear a mysterious humming noise coming from inside and an ominous orange light glowing through the lip around the door. Luckily, this isn't the home of some crazy Spider-Man villain trying to blow up New York. 58 Jorlamon Street is a fake house. Now, when I say fake, I don't mean it's just wires and lemons back there. It is a real house, or at least it was. Originally built in 1847, it was acquired by the Interborough Rapid Transit Company in 1908 who stripped and gutted the interior to create a ventilation shaft for the subway. It also doubles up as an emergency exit from the eastern end of the Jorlamont Street Tunnel. This house keeps fresh air pumping into the subway and gives crew and passengers a way to escape. Pretty neat. So it's perfectly innocent. The humming noise is probably passing trains, and the orange glow could easily be a safety light. Supposedly inside, it's actually rather boring. Lots of industrial-looking structural ironwork, and not a lot else. But as far as I know, nobody outside of the railway is allowed in there. Hmm, so maybe the boring interior is only what they want you to think. Who knows? Whatever, it's very curious. New York isn't the only place to conceal subway vents in creative ways either. If you've never been to Paris, you're missing out. The long boulevards and old buildings make it one of the most beautiful cities in the world. However, some keen-eyed citizens have noticed something peculiar about a few of those buildings. See if you can spot it. I'll give you a clue. If you look closely at the windows, someone's quite literally painted them on the side of the house. Whoa. See, this is 29 Rue Cancampois, and it's not a real building. When the Paris Metro was being expanded in the late 70s, there were huge issues around ventilation. Apparently, it's inhumane to trap French people in a tiny tube traveling at high speeds without any fresh air. Who knew? But the city didn't want to deface their beautiful districts by dotting fat, ugly chimneys all over the place. Place, so they integrated the ventilation shafts into the city's existing architecture. False facades like the one at Rue Cancampois can be seen all throughout the city. Unlike Rue Cancampois, though, not all of them rely on paint for their trickery. The windows at 145 Rue Lafayette, for example, are perfectly real. They just peer into an empty hollow building posing as a house. If you ask me, they'd look better if they were painted. But not all of these fake buildings are as innocuous as they want you to believe. Tower of Lies Just a short journey across the East River from Jorlamont Street is yet another New York fakery, except this one is much less subtle. Located at 33 Thomas Street, the former AT&T Long Lines building is an imposing 550-foot presence on the New York skyline. However, what separates 33 Thomas Street from any other tall New York building is its utter lack of windows. Hmm. Now that's suspicious. The official story goes that this building is a telephone exchange or wire center for connecting long-range communications. And I'm not saying it doesn't do that, but there are some pretty wild theories about what else goes on inside these dark walls. Documents leaked by renowned whistleblower Edward Snowden and interviews with former AT&T employees provide compelling evidence that 33 Thomas Street has served as a National Security Agency surveillance 
Excellent site, codenamed Titan Point. Hold up, a super secret spy facility? Hidden in plain sight? Surely not. Before you think I'm barking up the crazy tree, hear me out. The NSA and AT&T have a long history of working together. And a series of top secret NSA memos suggest they've hijacked the phone wires from a secure location within the building. Here, they've tapped and illegally gathered intel on US citizens' private communications for decades. Whoa, so much for a simple little phone connection center. Now I see why they don't want any windows, so no one can spy on the spies. Call me crazy if you want, but I have no doubt in my mind that this supposedly innocent telephone connection tower was a secret spying facility, at some point in time at least. But there are a few really out there theories that I just can't get behind. Some people think there's no telephone connection center at all, and that it's a cover story for a secret spy base housing agents who specialize and international espionage. Others think it's a real-life men in black complex full of aliens. Whatever the truth is behind 33 Thomas Street, it sure isn't entirely what it claims to be. Whoa, did you see that shady guy in a trench coat drop this letter with your name on it? It says, you think you know our secret, but you don't. To learn the truth, click the like and subscribe buttons and await further instructions. Go on. In the meantime, let's get back to the video. London Liar Along the leafy street of Leinster Gardens in London, you'll find house numbers 23 and 24. This pair of five-story houses share the same balconies, columns, and decorative features as every other house on the street, except for one key detail. 23 to 24 Leinster Gardens are only five feet thick. Whoa, and that's just the front. Wait till you see it from the back. See, during the 1860s, the city was expanding the Metropolitan Railway and needed to dig a large trench to make the tunnel. Because the OG 23 and 24 Leinster Gardens were directly above the new track path, they met an untimely end. However, once the tunnel was finished, local residents complained that the gaping tunnel now in their place was an eyesore. So this concrete facade was built to blend in with the rest of the street, and it's been there ever since. If you're tall enough, you can actually peer over the wall around the back and see the trains passing along the district in circle lines. Cool. However, wisecrackers over the years have decided this fake house is a great opportunity for a little fun. Back in the 1930s, savvy fraudsters sold tickets to a charity ball at the address only when all the well-to-do attendees showed up, they discovered the venue didn't even exist. Ouch. More recently, the address has been used for hoax pizza deliveries. Hey, at least the driver gets a free meal out of it, I guess. Fake Lake All I ever wanted was a place I could call my own. Here at Be Amazed Properties, we understand that a home isn't just about the bricks and mortar. It's about the memories you make and the people you share it with. So... Oh no, who forgot to put the lake in? All right, that was pretty goofy. But something not too dissimilar happened in Changsha, China. Property developers listed ads for an apartment complex with a beautiful man-made lake as a centerpiece. However, upon moving into these apartments, the residents were rather, uh, disappointed. It turns out the lake was a total lie made up by the developers to trick people. Instead, they'd added this blue plastic shape to the floor, which looks nothing like water, even if you squint. Those sneaks. If that were my place, I'd be asking for my money back. Huh, and I just bought new swimmies. Not good in the hood. Whenever I'm somewhere new, I need Google Maps to tell me where to go. And while it's never let me down, some LA natives noticed Google feeding totally false information. When looking at a map, they spotted entire neighborhoods that simply didn't exist. Uh, what? Suddenly, Silver Lake Heights and North Highland Park were showing up, which were totally foreign to people who'd lived their entire lives in the city. And just as quickly as they'd appeared, they vanished a few days later. Spooky. Now, before we go off the rails, there could be a perfectly innocent explanation for this. Google uses data to decide what to label certain neighborhoods. What data, they're pretty tight-lipped about. Who's to say that the data wasn't pulled from some scumbag realtor trying to make an area sound more exact? Exotic. But then again, to know that a company as big as Google has the power to change the name of where you live is kind of scary. Sure, they changed it back, but how do we know they won't do this again or bigger? Call me crazy, but I'll have the last laugh if you wake up one day and find out your town is now called Loserville. Population you. In loving memory. 
From time to time, we all get a little sad, and sometimes we might do things we regret out of sadness. That's okay. You've never done anything as wild as this guy I heard about from Piltown, Ireland, though. Back in the 19th century, his son was conscripted to fight in the Napoleonic Wars. But when news reached home that the son had disappeared and was assumed dead, his father was devastated. So much so, he began constructing a grand tower at the highest point in the village to commemorate his passing. Only it didn't exactly go to plan. See, the man worked tirelessly through the grief day and night to build his elaborate tribute. However, after two stories were finished, guess who rocks up? His son! What? Turns out he had disappeared, but he was fine. It had just taken him a few weeks to make his way back to Pilton to see his father again. Sheesh. Couldn't write a letter, bro? Dear daddy, whoa, it's crazy, yo. DW about me. We chillin'. Is it really that hard? Still, the man was overcome with joy at the return of his son and abandoned the tower half-built. And it's still standing. In recent years, the top floor has been converted to a water storage tower, but that's about it. Look, it might not be as fake as some of these other buildings, but a colossal memorial tower for your dead son who isn't actually dead is truly unhinged behavior, and I just had to include it. Boeing, Boeing gone. <clears throat> Sorry, we had to take a little break for a much needed rebrand. But Be Amazed Urban Solutions is back with another terrific investment opportunity. Boeing Wonderland. Located just outside Seattle, it's the perfect family neighborhood. And best of all, most of the houses are only about six feet tall. Wait a minute. Did he just say six feet? Yep. See, Boeing Wonderland isn't actually a real town at all. It's a prop town built by Hollywood set designer John Stewart Detley. But the town isn't the most surprising thing. It's what's below it. Back in the 1930s, aircraft manufacturer Boeing built a new facility to manufacture B-17 Flying Fortress and 307 Stratoliners. Starting off at a humble 60,000 square feet, in the space of just five years, it grew to a whopping 1.7 million square feet and was producing huge quantities of military aircraft. However, in the aftermath of the Pearl Harbor attacks where Japanese aircraft assaulted a major U.S. naval base in Hawaii, the U.S. were pulled into World War II and feared this giant Boeing plant could be a major target. So U.S. Army Corps built plywood houses and an entire fake town infrastructure to camouflage the facility with the next nearby town. The trees were made of chicken wire coated in tar and dipped in feathers. Grass was sprayed different shades of green to look realistic, they really pulled out all the stops. Sure, from the ground this wouldn't convince anybody, but it didn't need to. It needed to protect the 30,000 hardworking U.S. engineers building planes below the ground from potential aerial threat. And it worked perfectly. Not only did the plant survive the war, but it carried on producing planes until the 1980s. By then, though, most manufacturing had moved to more modern facilities. Come 2010, the Boeing plant fell into disrepair due to faulty pipes and earthquake damage and was demoed. However, a genius idea for a little fake town played a huge part in the outcome of the war. How cool is that? Shocking Fraud Nowadays, many of us take electricity for granted, but back in the early 1900s, electrical power was the big new thing for Toronto. City jurisdiction began rolling in the power on high-tension transmission lines from Niagara Falls, ready to be converted into currents for the average consumer. But there was a problem. See, you need a load of dangerous transformers, wires, and resistors to harness electricity, and no one wanted these in the city. As well as being ugly, if little Jimmy was playing nearby and ventured in to retrieve his hockey puck, <laughs> let's just say that's not ending well. So the city had to devise a plan, and it looked like this. Due to the ornate windows and rough cut stone, the building has been nicknamed the castle, but it's actually a power station. There's even a heavy set of oak doors that look a lot like a drawbridge. Little Jimmy stays safe and everyone is happy, but the castle isn't the only front for power. On the corner of Duncan Street and Nelson Street, substation D might not stand out as much as the castle, but that was the point. Back in the 1910s, this did district was full of factories, so the building was designed to blend in perfectly with its surroundings. The same goes for this house on 386 Eglinton Avenue East. This humble home 
looks like any other suburban house along the street. Someone even mowed the lawn every week. Only when you see it from the back, bam, someone's hiding the juice in the caboose. Genius. Sadly, this property and many others like it were destroyed and the land listed for sale. That's because as technology advanced, many of these transformer buildings became obsolete as larger stations were built underground. It's a shame they weren't kept as a little nod to the past. I'd love to do a spot of urbex inside. That's a wrap. I'm just a city boy, born and raised in South Detroit. But when I saw these houses in Russia, I stopped believing and nearly spat out my milkshake. The town of Suzdal has great historical significance. There are loads of buildings here dating way back to the 12th century. But see, that's the problem. When Russian President Vladimir Putin was due to visit Suzdal in 2013, city officials realized that a lot of buildings looked like they hadn't been touched since the 12th century. Yikes. So some wisecracking politician had the killer idea to wrap all the ugly, dilapidated houses in giant banners and, well, you be the judge. Yuck. These look awful. If the fake windows weren't bad enough, this one even has a cat on it. Oh boy. The funniest part is Putin never actually came. This was all a pointless endeavor. Wow. Very Russia. But it makes me wonder, how was such a beautiful historic city allowed to fall into such a state of disrepair? Well, the answer is pretty simple. A lot of very wealthy people do live in Suzdal, but in big private mansions on the outskirts of the city. These inner city homes, however, are mostly occupied by frail old people with little time time or money to carry out repairs. On top of that, many of the buildings are historical monuments protected by the state, so even if you wanted to spruce up the outside with a lick of paint, you've got to go to the local authority, wait in line, collect your forms, return your forms, then do more forms, yada yada, you get the picture. Understandably, most residents can't be bothered. It is sad though. I wish there was light at the end of the tunnel, but even if there was, the local counselor would stick a banner over it. Sham Castle if you had unlimited money to buy your dream house, what would it be? A luxury penthouse overlooking Central Park? A huge ranch with acres of land? Maybe even a castle? Well, if you lean towards the latter, make sure you're getting bang for your buck. During the 18th century, it became a trend for the landed gentry in rural Britain to build mock castles on their estates. While they look eye-catching and magnificent, they're also completely for show. This impressive building is on the Claverton Down outside Bath, England, and it was designed around 1755. Structures like these are called follies, and they're architectural buildings with no real purpose other than to decorate the landscape. The castle at Claverton Down was designed purely to improve the view from someone's townhouse in Bath. And looking at it from the back again, you can tell it was only meant to be viewed from one direction. Ick. If this is what I saw when my barber held the mirror up behind my head, we'd be fighting. But these fancy rich folk loved them. There's another folly over at Hagley Hall. Worcestershire, another down the road at Clint Grove, another at Castle Hill in Devon, and two at Croom Court. And that's just to name a few. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never taken in a beautiful landscape and thought, <gasps> Do you know what this means? Big castle. To me, it sounds like too much money, not enough sense. What do you think? Are these a waste of stone and money, or is there something else to it? Wolf in Steep Clothing so you've seen someone turn nothing into a useless castle, but what about someone turning a castle into, well, a whole load of useless nothing? That's right, Papa Amazed hit you with the old Uno reverse card. When citizens from the city of Wolfsburg awoke one morning in 2014, they noticed that their beloved Wolfsburg castle had vanished, and in its place was this. Wait, what? Thankfully, this horrific corporate makeover was only a temporary installation by German and Iranian artist Bettina Puschi. She created a fake facade composed of 10 skyscrapers that were all at one point in time the tallest buildings in the world, then erected that facade over the castle. Phew, I thought they'd wiped out a beautiful piece of history there. Pushchi's work is said to address a lot of important questions about how architecture and buildings interact with the environment. I'm not entirely sure what those questions are, but if you know, give me a hint down in the comments. What I do know is that she chose Wolfsburg to showcase the work because it's a relatively young city. See, even though the castle is referenced back in 1302, the city wasn't built around it until 1938 when Germany needed more housing for workers at a newly established Volkswagen factory nearby. So I kinda get it, but I'm sure many of the locals are much happier to have their beloved monument back. Narrow Miss 
Remember earlier in the video when I spoke about Leinster Gardens? Well, a short trip around the corner from that is another building that was heavily impacted by the creation of the tube line. Back in the 1860s, 23 of the houses on Thurlow Square were designated to be handed over to the Metropolitan District Railway, but in the end, only five were demolished. So when the new line was put in, it left an awkward and out of place triangular patch of land. By the late 1800s, this area had become quite a hub for Victorian artists, but with the railway line so close and only limited space available, the plot remained vacant for many years, until ingenious builder William Douglas had just the idea for what to put there and set about creating this. Wow, buddy, you made a facade. Way to go. Nuh-uh. See, from the outside, you'd say there's no way this is a real building. Its narrowest point is only six feet wide, but inside, Douglas managed to squeeze seven artist studios. Whoa, must have been tiny artists. Pretty hard to wrap your head around, right? Ha, brace yourself. In recent years, these fake-looking studios have been turned into actual apartments. No way. And back in 2021, a tiny 580-square-foot apartment sold for a mind-boggling $1 million. Huh? A million? Whoa, that's a little steep for a box with a stove if you ask me. Still, it goes to show not everything that looks fake is quite as untrue as it seems. Phew, we've reached the end of the video. Which of those fake buildings surprised you the most? Or are there any in your town or city that I've missed? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, thanks for watching.